Let God be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1450 America Road here in Henderson, North Carolina, where our pastor is Elder William T. Weston. We thank you for joining us today. We thank you for those in person, those on the way, those that want to be here, can't be here. We used to think that we're still able to join us there on Facebook. So to God be glory. You can give three ways. You can give by attending here every Sunday here in person. You can give by mailing to P.O. Box 526 in North Carolina, 27536. And you can give via cash app, dollar sign GR, GR Henderson, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed, and may the Lord bless you real good as you go to church today. And we receive that blessing that God has just for you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come here once again. We reached the last day, the last month of this year. And Father, you've done so many great things for us. So we thank you today. We come here just to tell you and show you how much we appreciate what you have done. And we're expecting great things for things to come in 2022, Lord. We give you all the glory. We know you're going to be glorified, Father God. So we thank you in a way, Father God, for making a way for healing us, Father God. And we've been our way maker, Lord. Oh, God, we give you all the glory and praise. Lord. We welcome you to this house, Lord. You will need to be son. So we need to be saved, Father God, Lord. Have your way, Lord, today. In our midst, Father God, Lord, receive our worship, our praise, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, we ask you right now, Father, to come by and hear my Lord. Somebody, Lord, needs your touch. Somebody wants to be saved. Man. Somebody wants to be delivered, Father God, Lord. They believe and they will receive in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we just thank you, Lord, for having done or keeping us this week, Father God, keeping us throughout this day, Lord. We know the cases are going up, but God, we're going to still sing a glory up. We're going to sing a praise up. I'm going to go up. We're going to sing more praise, Father. We're going to lift you higher and higher. So we know you will provide. You healed. You've done all that. You're still doing it. And so we thank you in advance, Father God, Lord. Let's try to know you in this house today, Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we will ever give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading, Psalms 1, Psalm 1, Psalm 1. Our scripture reading today, I almost said this morning. <laughs> Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, or like the shaft which the wind dropped away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. 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 Let's praise and worship God when it's time. For this is the last day of the year. So we can give God. He's given so much to us from January 1 of 2021. We can give him what he so much deserves. Amen. 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 Praise team, anybody, praise God, you're welcome to come this, this morning, this evening, as you magnify the name of the Lord.
mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels are before
like God. She said, has anybody God ever done anything to? Well, he's done a lot to and for. Thanking and praising God tonight, Heavenly Father, for just being able to stand with life, health, and strength. Right. And, and, and now sometimes we take so much for granted. Yes. And there's so many people that would just love to have just some strength. Yes. 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 Thanking and praising God for allowing us to bring us to this point in 365 days throughout the year. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, he has kept us. He has blessed us. Hallelujah. He's given and he's given and he's given and he's given and he's given, and he's given, and he's given. He continues to give. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Hallelujah. To be on the receiving end of the power of the Holy Spirit for one day saving us. Hallelujah. Seeing us in a world of sin. Heavenly Father. Even though Heavenly Father in the mighty name of Jesus we have fallen short. We ask him for forgiveness during this hour. God thank you and praise God for just his brand new grace and mercy because his compassion fails not. It's new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. Toward an unfaithful people. Mm -hmm. Just want to share a little small testimony. Uh, on this year, uh, I know through the course of time, I've been trying to pay for a house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I give him glory for that. Because I used to be afraid to be an acceptance or even to ask him for anything. And a little old mother said to me, with the sweetest voice, she said, Sister Dad, you can ask him for something if he wants to. Amen. He wants you to ask him. You know, being a man in Christ, I didn't know. I didn't want him to think. Knowing that God knows everything about me, I didn't want God to think that I was just serving him for his hand. I wanted to be in his face. I wanted to be in his grace. I wanted Hallelujah. to know all of that. Hallelujah. But I, I didn't ask for this blessing, people. God just blessed me. In Hallelujah. We were trying to do a little uh, reconstruction on our houses, and she told me about this place. I said, this place that I could go to, we're giving out money to rebuild your house and do some work on it. And I said, I can't go up there. I said, because I don't own my house. She said, just go in there. So I went. I went, and I, I, I said, let me call the man that I work for so he'll know what I'm doing. Because I felt like white people work together. You know? Maybe he put in a good word. <laughs> Had no clue. And called him, and uh, he talked to me. He said, you know, I don't think they're going to do it, but it's worth a try. So I did. I tried. I tried. You know, you got to try sometimes. You know, faith without works is true. It's dead, people. It's just as dormant as it can be. So I tried it, and it didn't work according to the way that I thought it was going to work. It was according to the way that God said it All right. Right. You know, He called me back. He said, Jeanette, I said, yes, sir. He said, me and my wife have been talking, we're going to give you that house. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, God knows I never thought about it. I didn't ask for it. I just was trying to pay for it. I didn't know. Hallelujah, that it would come to this. And I told Sharon, she said, I told you to give me that house anyway. But everybody knew it except for me. But I thank and praise God. Hallelujah. For his favor. You know, he took that king's heart and he turned it into his favor. Gave me favor with God. Yes, and God. Thank you. Thank you. And I got to praise him. Oh, God, I got to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Jesus. I'm so thankful for everything that Lord he does God. for me. Hallelujah. And I was in the house. I said, Lord, I got a little nervous. I think I talked to Sister Eve. I said, Sister Eve, there's like so many things happening since you gave me the house. I said, do I accept it or do I give it? She said, what did you say? Don't you give no blessing back to God. Don't you give God any blessing Hallelujah. Oh, silly me. Hallelujah. But you know what? I thank and praise the Lord. Because I said, whatever needs to take place in the house to be fixed, I said, Lord, I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to stand on your word. You said, you said the blessings of the Lord and make it rich. And it ain't got no sorrow with the house. I'm standing on his word. Hallelujah. Now, whatever needs to take place in that house, hallelujah. He will make the preparation That's to right. get it done. I just thank praise the Lord for that. I've been sitting on the testimony, and the lady that was here that wanted to know what my testimony is. She's not here. Maybe she's here on television. But I just thank oh, praise God for how good he is yes. to me, to such an unfaithful people. Yes. People Lord God, God. He's kept us. And if he don't yes. give you nothing, hallelujah. Yes. If he gave you the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Oh. You ought to be standing up there to somebody. Yes. Oh, I said, 
Father, believe me here, kept me Hallelujah. 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 I didn't even say I could go no more. Hallelujah. But I promised them one thing, Lord, if you just wake me up in the morning, Hallelujah. and put my feet on the floor, Hallelujah. I'm going to continue to move on and praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I have to think about other people that's really, really sick. It. Come on. it really pushes me more. Thank you, Lord God. That if they can just do a little portion yes. of what I do every yes. day. Lord Jesus. And I just want to thank God for just allowing me to continue to see my family, my thank church Jesus. family, each and every day. Thank we continue Jesus. to pray for one another. Amen. And just excited about tonight. I'm excited about 2022. Thank you. I feel like there's going to be some great things. Yes, indeed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord once again. And I know that they were going to be in the house down to praise. Man, because if God has brought you through 2021, you owe God a praise. Hallelujah. Some of you might have been sick. Some of you might have been afflicted. But God brought you through. For the song, for the writing of the book of Psalms, so many of the afflictions of the righteous. But God shall deliver them from them all. But we got something to praise God for. Can somebody help me share? Hallelujah. Somebody help me shout praise the Lord. If God's been good to you, you ought to shout hallelujah. I dare you to come out here. They've been out for 365 days and not give God the praise that he deserves. I dare you to stand out on God and not give him a praise. After he had blessed you all the year, can I get somebody to help me? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Yes, thank God. Hallelujah. For the man of God is to bring forth the word of God. Why 
you know, faith comforts us. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. 1 Corinthians 2 and 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, we attempt to comfort each other in many different ways. We do it with sympathy cards when somebody lost a loved one. We try to show comfort by sending them a card. We try to get comfort from the doctors who prescribe us medication and things. We try to comfort ourselves. We cover one another with food, with money. We try many ways to comfort ourselves. We even hug each other to try to comfort each other. But when that individual who has lost their loved one, when that individual who is sick, when that individual who don't know what to do, when their families and friends leave, something has to comfort them. Something has to be in place to comfort them. When someone loses a loved one, everybody brought all the chicken from KFC and all the sodas and the homemade pies. When all that is gone, when all the family members of preaching have left the house, when all that is gone, and that person is sitting alone, something has to be there to comfort them. That's why the faith comforts me. We must have faith. Why? Because faith makes me. It makes me. Verse 10, but the God of all grace, whom he had called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after he has suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. We were all in a situation that sometimes we don't know how we got in that problem. We don't know how we got there. We know we got there. Sometimes we know what we've done to get in a problem. That's right. That's it. Mm -hmm. However, when it's all over, we should have learned a lesson. Amen. 2021 should have taught everyone a lesson. Amen. And if you're not learning a lesson, that's because you don't want to learn. You don't want to grow. You don't want to improve. You don't want to be better. Amen. So, my faith, when I say faith makes me, it makes me say I'm sorry. It makes me say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. It makes me say I love you more. It makes me act right. My faith does that for me in 2021. Talking about we must have faith. The same faith that we had in 2021, we've got to make sure we have a stronger faith, a better faith in 2022. Because the same thing we fought in 2021, who knows we won't fight the same thing in 2022. It might come in a different approach. It may look different, but it's the same DNA, the same method. And we've got to make sure we have the faith. So faith makes me. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ephesians 2 and 8. Faith makes me. The gift of God. That's very important because I don't know about you, but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, has been with me the entire year of 2021. I couldn't have made it without. I'm sorry. I, that's something that we all need. We need Him, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the Holy Spirit, He is the Holy Ghost. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Hebrews 11 6. It reminds me of my job. As you know, I work at Chick fil A. Um, it reminds me in my role, in my title, in my job, where I have to supervise. And oftentimes we hire new people. And primarily, we have to be training with new people unless they come from Chick fil A. However, with me and my team, and my team leaders, my team members, it gets very busy at Chick fil A and they're moving fast, they doing what they got to do to get a lighter, to clean up, to get the food pushed out, and the customers do the job there. Yes, but primarily when a person is first trained, they come in, they do the orientation, they do the training, and they watch videos to teach them how to do things at Chick fil A. And after they're done, they're supposed to know, they come to the back where I'm at, in the kitchen, and they start to work in a position. Yeah. Whether it's fries, nuggets, bread, putting sandwiches together, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But I say that to say it because many times, new hires look to 
leadership to come and help them when they need help. If they need my mom, they holler, hey, can I need some help? Can you can you show me how to do this? Can you show me how to do that? All of that is good. I enjoy helping somebody, especially you know people that are new that don't know what they what to do. So doing this process with the new hires, um, I, I, I've come to learn that sometimes you can't run every time they call. Come on now, come on now. Every time they're calling, I'm running, my team leaders running to them, and other team members are running to them to help them with what they need. So I, and I can't, I'm learning now that I can't do that when we hire new people. Why? Because they become dependent on me, on my leaders. So they become dependent on me. And there's nothing wrong with that sometimes. But when it becomes where they want you by their side 24 7, oh, that can't happen. Amen. I say that say because in verse 10 it says, After you have suffered a while, I like to let my team members suffer a little while. I'm going to let you stay in that spot until you get a down pack. I'm going to let you stay in that spot until you don't need no help. I'm going to let you suffer. For a little while, because you don't know how to suffer, you don't know how to, you don't know how to grow, you don't know what it means to get behind and get all back up. When you're suffering, you panic. You looking for somebody. I need something. I need something. And it's the same way with anything. You panic in action that you need something. I need my phone. I call 911. I need this because we're dependent on our phone for help. So in Chick Fil A, it's the same way. They come in. I need help. I run into them. I say I got to stop. I'm going to suffer, as they did in verse 10, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, and sell you. And I want my team members to be strengthened. I want them to be more established, quick, urgency when you're working, when you're doing something. And all that when I have that, they want to suffer for a while. Faith tells me. Faith comforts me. Faith makes me, and faith tells me that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. If we didn't have faith, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. Amen. Sister Eve was telling her testimony. She said she's walking by faith. Hallelujah. Now, she was walking by self help. She might not want to be here today. But it's because of her faith, her confidence, her trust in God, not the doctors, not the physicians. But in God, and God gave wisdom to them to help her. Faith tells me everything's going to be all right. And sometimes you question, why am I going through this? Why is this hardship upon me? Why am I bank account low? Why? Why I can't find what I'm looking for? Why? 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 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Yea, and all that we live got, got it in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. On this side, this journey, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'd rather be on this side with trouble than be on the other side with trouble. Why? On this side with trouble, I have a hope. I have somebody to help me along the way. I have a God. I have the Holy Ghost that teach me on this side. When I step on the other side, I ain't got nobody to help me. My family's there, but they may die. The drugs, the, the Tylenol, they there, but they're going to run out. I have nothing there that's going to make me, that's going to comfort me on the other side. So what's, what side are you going to be on? So I'm learning that now as I'm growing up. I'm looking at people my age, 22, at the things that they do. I'm looking at 22, the things that I do. I'm looking at my life, and I'm looking at their life. Sometimes, you know, being human, because we all are human, sometimes we look at other people's lives, and we say, well, I can't have my life. Like that. Why can't I have this in my life? I'm doing this, I'm doing all this, and I'm expecting to have the same thing, if not more or better. So all of this is what I'm thinking, 22. But like I said, I had to realize, and I said, why? 
Why am I going through? Why is this happening? I'm on this side. This side that I'm on in Christ, in God, in the church, in his temple. On this side, I'm going to go through some things. On this side, I'm going to have to push through some things. I'm going to have to suffer for a while. People that suffer that's in the world, that's doing it and everything, they suffer. They don't get savage. They don't get settled. They settle in the ground. But other than that, they don't make it. They settle in jail. They don't make it. So I'm grateful for the life that I live, the life that I have. I can't do no more comparison in my life to nobody else's life. I got to stop that. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's plan is different. God has the blueprint. God is the contractor. He is in control. He is making things and shaping things how he wants them to be. And we don't understand that. And then we go like I did. Why? Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his person. purpose. This is a reminder to me. This is what, this is what, to see you talking about earlier, encouraging yourself. So, I don't know what's going to happen in 2022. We, we all, nobody, nobody knows. We can make a uh, hypothesis as they taught in school to educate and guess. But nobody knows. But what I do know is that we must have faith. Your trials and afflictions, your pain will make you, they will settle you, strengthen you, restore you, establish you, and you are not in this thing alone. So in 2022, do as the scriptures say, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and continue instant in prayer. Romans 12 and 12. And I hope you all have a healthy and blessed new year and let your faith work. Amen. 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 Let that faith work. Somebody wrote a song one day, and I hope you can pick it up. I'm going to just give you a little bit. Amen. The song said, Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I say, Hallelujah. 
Now Josh Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark, seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend of every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and come past the city, and let him that is on pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the all men went before the priests that blew with the trumpet, and the re reward came after the ark. The priests going on and going with the trumpet. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord come past the city, going about it once, and it came into the camp, and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets and ram's horns. Before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the reader war came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawn of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city, and the city shall be accursed even in and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Ray after Holly shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we, we sent. And just for a few minutes, I just want to talk about shout in victory. Shout in victory. First, we need to know that um, Jericho was originates in the Canaanite word for moon, for the name of the lunar deity Yarika, meaning that, that they serve an idol of God. And so God already told the Israelites when you go into the promised land, I want you to get rid of all of the idol of gods. I don't want any of them to live. So now he said, I want you to get rid of them. The wall represented slavery. Being held hostage, keeping away from, keeping back from, keeping out of the promise. What's better than that? So now, we have the scripture telling us about the Israelites going into the promised land. But there were some obstacles in the way that God had to get rid of. Notice I said God has, because God always has strategy that he uses to get us where we need to get. While he does the work because he is all creative all-powerful, all-knowing. He uses man. Otherwise, God would be breaking his own rules. Because God operates in the spiritual, which is why he said that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God uses us as vehicles to accomplish his perfect will. And so if we want to please God, while we live in the natural, we must operate in the spirit. We have to be spiritual minded and spiritual vessels. Tell somebody, I am not what you see. I live in a body, but I am all spiritual. Look at your neighbor and say, I live in a body, but trust me, I am all spiritual. So we have the Israelites going taking possession of the promise that God gave to Abel, who later became Abraham. 
But there were obstacles. There was some things that are in the way. Just like with us, they had obstacles. Theirs was fear and unbelief. Ours are fear and unbelief. It has kept us stuck. It has held us back. It has made us turn around. But just like the Israelites, this new year is a new beginning for those who will be willing to overcome obstacles and go into the promises of God. If we go back into the scripture, we see that God eliminated the unbelievers and the fearful. If you made it this far, you are neither fearful nor an unbeliever. No matter what the enemy try to tell you, you have been tried and you have made it this far. You just have to stop listening to the enemy and believe God. Put him in his place which is under your feet and take the authority that God has given you when he gave you the Holy Ghost and walk in victory. New year, new season. Tell somebody I know who I am and in 2022, I'm going to take dominion over. I'm going to walk in dominion because I can do all things through him that strengthened me. Because as he is, so am I in the earth. Because God is still in control. You better tell somebody, I'm living in a body, but I'm all spiritual. And God operates in the spiritual, so I got to move in the spiritual. So God gives instructions to Joshua. When you get to Jericho, I want you to destroy him. I know that there's a wall around it, but it's just an obstacle. It has no power other than what you give it. Just like with our fears over our obstacles, it, they have no power. It is an inanimate object. It has no life or spirit. It lacks consciousness or power of motion. It is something that the enemy has put in front of you that keep you from getting to your destiny. People of God, we've got to look at the obstacles as what they are. Inanimate objects. They are thoughts in our mind that the word of God says to cast down every vain imagination and every hot thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So if it's telling you anything that's contrary to the word of God, it's an obstacle that has no power and you can move it by faith. They don't make decisions. They don't have authority. We don't have to fear them for they are in Adamant object. Say somebody, I'm tired of this object in my way. An object that they have no life. It's an illusion from the enemy to keep us from reaching our destiny. They are lies from the enemy. They are there to make us afraid and to keep us stuck. But in the year of 2022, God is looking for some believers that's going to take authority. God is looking for some true believers that's going to believe what he said and going to stand on his word. Yes, you had some fallback. Yes, you had some trip up. Yes, you had some hip up. But God said, great is he that's on the inside of you than he that is in the world. Because God is strategic, he doesn't leave it up to the Israelites to determine the best way to remove the obstacle. But he gives them specific instructions. While they may seem simple, they are strategic. So just like with us, he takes a simple thing to confound the wise. He knows where we are and what we are capable of. That's why we don't have to perpetrate a fraud. Because God already knew we need him. If he didn't think thought we needed him, he would have never sent his son. He knows how we operate. He knows we operate more in fear than we walk in victory and courage. He knows that we walk more in unbelief than we do in faith. Which is why we don't have to try to be so deep. My deep deep doesn't show who God is. It show who I am. Because God already told us his ways are not our ways. And these are his thoughts, our thoughts. They are levels above us. They are beyond anything that we can comprehend. They are infinite while ours is finite. When we got a little bus, God got a great big rock because he is the great big G-O-D. He is not on the level that we are on. So anything that we want that we think our also is in the way that can't get us to where he wants us to go, all we got to do is call on the name of the Lord. He's a mighty strong tower. All we got to do is show some faith in him. And the right hand of his righteousness is going to work on our behalf. So, so God gives Joshua a strategy to bring the wall down. Go around the wall, Joshua. All your soldiers before the priests. One time 
for six days, we can't tell God what to do because he has the plan. Not us, not our families, not our friends, not our spouses, not even our enemy, and definitely not the, the devil, contrary to popular to belief. God said, get in formation. Because that's what he always tells his army. Get in formation. He's giving everybody a rank, which is why we can't outrank the pastor. Which is why we don't need to outrank the priest. Which is why we don't need to outrank those that God has put in leadership to get us where we need to go. He said, have the seven priests carry seven rams on, trumpets in front of the ark of the covenant. For the seventh day, God expanded his instruction and said, I want you to go around this wall seven times on this day. Those bearing arms, the priests blowing the trumpets, and when they make a long blast with the trumpet, all the people should shout at the top of their lungs. Notice God gave the instructions as far as when to speak. The victory is in the detail. The victory is in what he says. We don't have to add to it and we don't have to take from it. When God gives instruction, the most minute instruction must be followed. We mess up because we speak about what's going wrong. We speak about the obstacles. Don't you know that your words reveal to the enemy your doubt and your fear? Don't you know that the enemy uses your words as ammunition against you? Don't you know that the words carry spirits? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, and the power of life and death lies in the tongue. In this new season, in this new year, if you want the promises of God, you're going to have to watch what you say. You're going to have to use wisdom. Maybe you're going to have to take what you are know and apply to every situation. If you don't know the words, you don't have anything to use. You got to know the word for what it says. The word of God tells us that David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. David said it this way, I meditate on your word day and night. We got to take the word of God and meditate. It's got to be like living water, the spring fall. You're going to have to hear the instruction. you got to be wise and you can't refuse them. God is going to get his people to his promises in the new year. So you might as well get ready. The TD text said get ready, get ready, get ready. you got to get ready because God got a prepared place for a prepared people. And if you ain't ready, you're not going to get what God has for you. Ain't a devil in hell going to be able to keep you from the promise. You better listen to anybody else's voice. You better hear God's voice 
and then you gonna take authority over. And that means you're gonna walk in dominion. Don't you know the word of God says that when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you're gonna have power. So if you got power, you better use it. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you better get it. Because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't have power, you don't have authority, and you can't take a dominion over anything. Now when the walls came down, the people shouted. It was after the obstacles was removed. After the obstacle moved in your life, it's time to speak. After God moved things out of your way, which is what he's doing now in the old year. I heard the preacher say before me, he said, he said, everybody went through something. But if you made it this far, that means the obstacle was moved out of your way. So now, when an obstacle moves, you got to speak. You got to make known God's deeds. It's time to speak and let someone know that God is still moving, still moving, and still saving. Still moving and still delivering. Still moving and still healing. Now it's time to speak. Now it's time to shout. Now it's time to move into the promises of God. If that's been all the time, it's been a time now. But there is too much fear. There is too much unbelief. But God is reaffirming that you got enough faith to let him handle your enemy while you enjoy the victory. Watch God move this year. Walk into your blessing. Walk into your destiny. Walk into the promise of God. But most of all, shout the victory. Let the enemy know that it's not what I see. It's what I don't see. Because I'm sitting in heavenly places. Far above all principalities. i got some authority. I'm going to move like God said. i got dominion. And with God